This is the mess that usually ends up uh, having to be plugged in and out of my laptop every time I try and set it up in my desktop scenario here in my uh, studio. I've got an Ultrabook and I, it is powerful enough to run the desktop scenario, in fact better than my previous desktop. The trouble is, every time I come down here, I have to plug in all this. You're watching uh, Ultrabook News, my name's Chippy, and I've got here the uh, Toshiba Dynadoc U30. It's a USB 3.0 version of their Dynadoc, the cabled version, um, and it is something I've been looking forward to testing for quite a while. Thanks to, to Toshiba for sending it over. In this video, we're just going to unbox it, take a look around it, and I'll tell you what it can do and how it can help get rid of that rubbish there. So let's take a look uh, into the uh, the box here. This is a brand new, uh, brand new retail packaging, and uh, there's the dock there. This one actually fits the styling of the Toshiba Z830 and a couple of other devices they have. There's the Toshiba Z830 over there, and as you can see, pretty much fits the the styling. So if you haven't actually worked out what it is yet, it's a USB 3 docking station. And if you look at the back, you'll, it'll be clear what's going on. USB 3 goes in there, and what comes out is DVI and HDMI uh, via um, DisplayLink adapters. DisplayLink is the company that makes the chips that extends displays uh, from USB, oh, sorry, over USB to external displays. Gigabit Ethernet LAN, two USB 2s, two USB 3s, USB 3 out, here we've got front, uh, center, center or sub, and rear, and then flip it over. On the front you've got very handy mic, headphone, and two USB 3 charge, uh, charge ports as well, so they actually do sync and charge a couple of lights there. It's a pretty light device, there's a Kensington port lock on there. It's supposed to stand up that way, on the desk, like that. And basically you keep everything plugged into the back and when you get to your PC all you do is you plug one USB cable in and your power of course into your laptop and you're away. Let's have a look into the box to see what, we, what comes with it because cables are, are pretty important. Here we've got the, the stand. That's a pretty hefty uh, stand actually. It's probably part metal that actually. It's pretty pretty nice and that's just gonna obviously plug in there like that. Okay, and then we've got uh, the power plugs here. There's a UK and a European power plug, nice and lightweight. And I'm guessing there's going to be drivers. There's the power adapter. And they are sending the USB 3 cable. And, oh, handy, DVI to VGA adapter. So you can use HDMI, VGA, or DVI. Here's the quick start guide, which I We'll have a quick look at it now, and driver's disc as well. So one driver, one set of drivers for the, the devices, rather than, uh, as you can see in the background there, my set of cables, uh, which all require drivers, USB here, um, keyboard, and, uh, and so forth. So let's see if this Dynadoc can sort out this cable salad. So the instructions are fairly clear and straightforward. There's four steps. Plug the power cable in this end. Plug the mains into the other end. Plug the square end of the USB 3 in here. This is a hefty cable. Actually, very interesting is that this uh, DC in is exactly the same as the DC in on the Ultrabook, so what a shame it is that it didn't have a DC pass-through so that I could actually save myself the adapter uh, and then take the adapter to work or have it as a spare at, at home. Um, I think part of the desktop setup is that you do need two adapters anyway for your Ultrabook, so if, if a DC pass-in had been provided that would have been great. Here's the pretty hefty USB 3 cable which now has to go towards the back of my Ultrabook and Unfortunately, plugs in the other side, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. That's it. It's just to recognize the device. Let's see whether we've got some action. Power light on the USB 3 adapter there, and the Ultrabook is loading some drivers. So let's let that load its drivers, and we'll come back to it. So there's a ton of drivers loading there. Um, 
some stuff not found there I see and some stuff still loading but you can see that uh, it's found well it's found a lot of devices the USB 2 hub uh, a Dyna, the Dynadoc audio, the Dynadoc Ethernet so the driver searches have failed on that which means in comes your DVD to help but of course on your Ultrabook you're going to need an external DVD reader or you need to go online to download the drivers well actually wouldn't it be a good first test to use the USB driven uh, CD reader that we have for our Ultrabook, got to plug that in there and see if it works. Certainly, power's coming through there, and we will drop the DVD in, run the driver software. I think it's fair to say it's going to be very important to make sure you've got the correct driver drivers installed here because this is a composite device with a ton of bits of USB hardware in there you want to have the right drivers in there uh, before you kick off doing anything right let's see if that's uh, gonna load the drivers and we'll come back and check out the status in a minute so what it's doing now actually uh, although, although it's seen the DVD and it's started autoplay it's actually already started downloading some da display link software so there's obviously a USB uh, hard drive component in the USB dock which can contains the display link drivers so there's a software component that goes on the ultrabook or on the laptop and it's important to note that this does take CPU cycles so to actually uh, get the display signal compressed um, and then over to the, to the display link uh, receiver here so that it can be sent out to the uh, HDMI and DVI K, uh, connectors actually requires software so there is a CPU load component on this um, we will test to see how much that is uh, uh, it's going to load it's going to put on the ultrabook but let's just run auto run now and get the rest of the drivers installed come back to that in a minute Okay, we're rebooted. Um, let's take the uh, DVD away and um, let's start plugging in some USB devices. So, let me zoom into the back of the device here. As you can see, I've got a uh, multi monitor behind. Hopefully, that's going to spring into life. We're going to connect that via HDMI and that's going to go there. My other monitor is going to go via DVI and that's going to go via this connector here. Uh, VGA I don't need. My Gigabit Ethernet is going to connect into there. My keyboard is going to connect into there. And my audio is going to connect into the front there. So just take a look what we got there from the top. You've got, uh, I've got my audio which goes over to my mixer. I've got a keyboard, a mouse, I've got a gigabit ethernet which is already springing to life, DVI and HDMI on there and then underneath that you've got the USB 3 and the power. So let's see what happens. Now look what's happened on the screen here. I have three displays. Now this is a Sandy Bridge based Ultrabook. This is not an Ivory Bridge based Ultrabook that in theory can support three displays. This is a Sandy Bridge Ultrabook. I'm going to leave the camera running because I want you to see any problems that I have as we do this. I'm just going to change the input on this here so that it goes to HDMI. And I'm going to change the input on my other screen to DVI. Look at that. The screen's sprung into action. And on the other side, check out what we've got. Now then, is my mouse going to work? Mouse works. Uh, Okay, so over there you can 
can see the mouse. Let's just zoom in so you can see the mouse. You can just pro prove that it's working. There's the mouse. So we haven't got the layout quite right yet, but uh, there's the mouse pointer on the other side. So I just need to go back here, move these around. What have we got then? Uh, okay, so that I guess goes there. That one goes in the middle, and that one goes there. Let's apply that. Let's see if we can move some. Yes, there we go. There we go. And you know what? That is fantastic. I actually didn't expect it to do three screens, and I'm looking at... Okay, let me be honest. I haven't got my glasses on, but this definitely looks perfect in terms of uh, quality here. You won't be able to see this on the on the screen, but we've got this one connected. It's a 1080p monitor on the left via HDMI 1366 by 768 in the middle, and on this side is I think it's 1400 by 900. Um, let me just check that on this over here. Uh, number three is Oh, they're, sorry, it's, it's, they're both 1920. So there's two full HD displays there and a 1366 by 768 in the middle. Um, so that's something like 2, 4, 5, 5,500 by you know, 1080 maximum. That is a serious amount of workspace. Let's have a look to see what we've got in terms of, um, of audio devices here. We can do that just by going down to the audio uh, panel there, so playback devices. And we've got two audio devices here. We've got the DisplayLink audio device. This is a surround sound set of uh, devices. There are the port layouts there. Sorry, just underneath there, so you can see it's a surround sound device. Uh, let's just play some music just to make sure it is working. And um, very quickly because of uh, copyright and that should come through. Okay, that's playing through HDMI at the moment. So digital output is working through HDMI. It's playing now through the TV over here. Let me just turn that off a second because I'm just going to have to change the um, device. A gigabit Ethernet port, is that working? Yes, it is. I want to make sure that I've got the wireless turned off on this. Let's turn the wireless, all the wireless off. And just to make sure that we've got um, gigabit Ethernet working. Now that's switched off and we are connected via. Here we go, it's still on the wireless. Um, we've got three local area network connections. And let's just show those. Come on, are you connected via Wi Fi or what? It seems like it's still connected via Wi Fi. Switch them all off. There we go. That's all off now. Let's see if that connects up via um, connects up via the LAN. You can see the LAN connector there, and it's connected. And let's just uh, bring up a browser. And come on, guys, give me some internet love. I think that might even be installing Gigabit Ethernet driver there. Seems to be connected. Maybe I need to do something to make it go and uh, connect via dynamic, d d uh, yeah, DHCP maybe. Oh, come on. It's trying, just probably not getting the IP address. And I've got an error message here that it didn't get the IP address. So the device is there, I just need to make sure that uh, it's configured properly. Let me just quickly run a little bit of configuration test and come back to you. Okay, that wasn't a problem with the Dynadoc. My DHCP server had simply run out of IP addresses. I've just extended the range and we got the IP address straight away. And as you can see, we are up and running with uh, web pages here. Let me just uh, show you that we're running there. No problems at all.
connectivity speed, I want to just confirm that it is at 1 gigabit a second here. And if you can see that, it's connected at 1 gig a second. So it is full gig E here. Of course, we'll have to test the, uh, the throughput to see how that is. So that is so far so good. We have a USB keyboard, we have a USB mouse, we have a gigabit ethernet connected, we have a DVI, we have an HDMI, both of those running at, uh, sorry, HDMI is up here, DVI is here, both of those running at 1080p. Here's the USB 3 connector that goes to the uh, Ultrabook and here's the power connector. So that is clearly a lot tighter than it was before. There's the Dynadoc there sitting alongside the uh, Toshiba Z830. We've got the USB connector on that side. So that's the only thing I need to plug in now to get the displays, the keyboard and mouse and the or audio output are working. Oh, and the gigabit ethernet. And now what I want to do is just show you a couple of other things that I'm, I'm going to be adding in to the whole setup here. Number one is that on the front, you've got uh, mic and headphone port. So uh, there's your headphones, there's your, oops, sorry, wrong way around, there's your mic, there's your headphones. So I'll be able to use my headphones without worrying about that. It should work with Skype without any problem. Of course, I can plug in my DVD drive there. Um, sorry, there's the DVD drive. I can plug it in there if I need it and then take that away. That's very accessible. High definition uh, webcam, which I can plug in there if I need to. Um, that's pretty handy. Controllers, anything you need. So you've got two USB 3s at the front. And um, if I could find it, I'll just uh, show you that I could plug in my external. USB drive there as well, so pretty, pretty handy. There's a lot more tests I need to do on this. Uh, of course, I need to test graphics performance on the external displays, uh, video playback performance. Uh, in fact, I could just quickly try a 1080p video on this right now. If we go to videos, I should have something here that I could, uh, could use. Bear with me. It's a lot of... Uh, a lot of files here. This is at least a 720p video. And let's just pop that over to this screen over there. Hey guys, it's Chippy. I'm just going to do That's working. upgrade on the Toshiba Z830 here. So I'm going to run you through uh, the process in, in an article. And this is video to a Now let's get video working on the other screen. Toshiba Z830. The first thing we need to do is to create the system image. Create a uh, recovery media. Ah, and thank you, Gamer. By using backup and restoring Windows 7, you can see that here. Just uh, hit the start menu, type backup, and you'll find this uh, window. And then you need to. Should children be allowed to. Oh, here we go. Backups. Even if it puts them in jeopardy. Case in point, Jordan Romero. Two weeks ago, he so there's at least a uh, ever to conquer the world's highest mountain. But is that title worth risking death? Before you decide, watch his personal video. It's the untold story of what. Right. Let's. Uh, let's stop that. Okay. So video playback works. I'm going to take a closer look at the quality of that playback there. I think that maybe on the left hand side there was a little bit of a slowdown in the frame right there but I'm not 100% uh, sure but what we need to do now is to shut this down and to start it up uh, because there have been queries about how quickly these docking stations actually connect all the devices of course it's USB and it has to check that the hub's connected check, and then check all the devices that are connected to the hub and then uh, connect all those devices to the drivers and then enable those uh, devices within the system. So let's uh, let's see how long it takes, for example, to get some some mouse movement uh, on the screen uh, with the USB connected uh, connected mouse here. Toshiba Z830. Um, I have here pretty pimped out actually six gigs of uh, memory and my dig digital SSD bulletproof three, 256 gigs super fast SSD upgrade on this one. So actually booting. Is, uh, is pretty quick, so that should be done in uh, in about 10 seconds, and then we'll see how long it takes to get the uh, the screens up and the mouse. And um, I'll tell you. Oh, so the mouse is working immediately. Let me uh, log in here, and um, 
it looked like that was the, um, the external screen connecting there. Oh, come on. Get rid of the fingerprint thing. And let's see what happens. Does it all come up with me? Yes, it does. Let's, um, there we go. Three screen goodness, really, real goodness as he falls over in delight behind the camera. Should children be allowed <laughs> to act like grown ups, even if it puts them in jeopardy? Oh dear, good. Anyway, that is superb. I'm really pleased about that. I was a little bit worried that the device was going to take a little, little while to, 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 um, to enable. Um, I'm really pleased that the video is working and I'm surprised that it's three screen. I thought it was only going to be two screen. It's productivity here. I'm so excited. Check out ultrabooknews.com where I'm going to write up a review on this over the next uh, a few days. So early July it is right now. Um, check out ultrabooknews.com slash tag slash Toshiba. You'll get the uh, uh, details of the review. On, on that tag page. Thanks for watching, my name's Chippy. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, on G+, on Facebook, and on Twitter. And of course, we'll see you on the site. Drop some comments in on the article, and I'll be sure to, to make sure I answer your questions. Thanks for watching.